Hello my soccer universe. Well, what do you say? Italy, after failing to qualify for the World Cup, they are the second team to qualify for the Euros, so I'm happy about that. Not so happy about their performance or actually the um, you know, game itself and their look, but let's talk about that in a little bit because I want to start actually in Group D, which is a group that really took many twists and turns yesterday. Um, at first, uh, Georgia hosted Ireland in a matchup that you would have thought that Ireland needs to definitely win. Uh, in order to have um, good hopes of qualifying, but they didn't manage a win. Uh, they only managed a nil-nil draw, I think, late. There was a post-hit or whatever, but it was kind of an even affair, this game. And at that point, yes, Ireland is at 12 points, but you thought the points dropped. And then the big Denmark-Switzerland game, uh, which was actually, for me, the game I looked most forward to. And it proved to be a pretty good game. Uh, Denmark getting an early quick start, but then Switzerland took over and uh, worked themselves to get chances uh, that Kasper Schmeichel just and, uh, took out. I mean, the first one was by Granit Xhaka, a thunderous shot that would have hit right into the corner of the goal, and he just scrapes it out. Then a little bit later, a great action by Mehmedi. Um, a through ball and you can see it in the replay he just looks at the ball looks at the ball one times it right on the net again Kaspar Schmeichel dives deep gets it out um, second half Rodriguez hits the crossbar I think a Swiss head also hit the bar yeah uh, through the first uh, through Schalke so uh, thanks to Schmeichel uh, Denmark is still in the game and Switzerland was really super dominant at that point but then it happens how it so often happens with the Swiss these days that uh, towards the end of the game they lose control of the game. And it started around the 60th, 65th, 70th minute that I got the feeling that uh, Switzerland needs, needs, needs to be careful here because Denmark might actually pull uh, away and so it proved to be it. Um, Ericsson it was a quick counter. Ericsson just gets the ball right on the sideline and then quickly plays it in, in, into the middle where uh, Yusuf Paulsen catches the Swiss defense off guard, runs through, makes it 1-0. And another Kasper Schmeichel save, this time uh, like a last minute free kick, where uh, he again dives down. I think the ball would have probably hit the post uh, from what I judged, but still another great save. And Denmark holds on for a super important win for them. Um, that puts them really now in a good position to qualify. We have now uh, Ireland, 12, Denmark 12, and Switzerland with a game less, 8 points. Um, we have Ireland and Switzerland playing, or Switzerland Ireland. I think it is the matchup. Let me just confirm that quickly. Yeah, it is Switzerland Ireland on Tuesday, uh, which is a huge game for Switzerland. Switzerland needs to win this. Same thing for Ireland. Ireland needs a draw to hold Switzerland off. Um, at the moment, with if, you, if I give Swiss, Swiss, Switzerland three points to draw them level, they are one point uh, off the pace behind Ireland and Denmark. A very, very complicated group, I gotta say. It is not clear to me who is gonna qualify from there. Um, the only thing is, but uh, even that will not matter in the end. Um, Denmark and Switzerland have the playoff spot secured and I think Ireland will, as we will saw also, move in there but really really interesting open group and that uh, Denmark Switzerland game really nice I also gotta give it to the stadium that they had there um, I like the parking that's a great soccer arena let's move on to group F where we had another some other big results happening yesterday um, Romania takes a long time to find the breakthrough against the Faroe Islands, who themselves had chances, but it was only the 75th minute when uh, Puskas uh, finally found the breakthrough. Um, the stadium in Thorshaven is also one of the more interesting ones with the uh, to a certain, behind the right goal, there is this glass wall uh, that I don't know, this has to be very safe glass because it seems like this could be broken and they're building another stand behind, but uh, you know, that will hopefully not take off the view of the little houses in the background. Um, and then, in the end, 
Romania gets their a secure win. Uh, Mitrita in the 83rd and Kejaru, who, who injures himself on that one in stoppage time, uh, make it 3 0. It looks way more comfortable than, than it was. I think the Ferry Islands were well in there. Um, not comfortable at all was Spain's showing in Norway. I actually saw the second half of that game. Uh, also, the, uh, a little bit high highlights of the first half. Uh, Spain, as you would imagine, controlled more, but it was not uh, very convincing. It was more sideway passes and so on. Um, really, Norway kept Spain on the back foot. And I think it was all, or, or in the first game that uh, Norway had given Spain uh, considerable trouble. And again, they had their chances uh, early, but it was not a great game. And I think now uh, Sergio Ramos, before I forget, is also the record national team player for uh, the Spanish in the second half, Spain gets off to a uh, roaring start. They kind of uh, was a, a chance that you thought was or or, or missed, and then Saul Nuguez from the distance takes a shot that uh, bounces right ahead of the goalkeeper who gets his hands on. But with that bounce upward, it's really hard to um, uh, save it. And therefore, it's 1-0 for Spain. And for the longest time, you thought uh, they might hide, hang on to that. Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm like 65th or something like that, uh, it was really that I thought that uh, Spain had quite control of the game and there was not uh, much happening. Um, they even hit the post uh, one more time. Uh, Fabian Ruiz, that was the one I was looking for here. Or the crossbar uh, that could have pulled it away, but then Norway clawed itself back into the game with a big fight and actually got quite some chances that uh, Joshua King mostly was missing left. I don't, I don't want to say left and right, but he had two misses where I think um, you need to get those at least on goal and you have a uh, goal rather quickly there, but he never could. And Norway really would have deserved an equalizer. Unfortunately, they got it because of a um, kind of mad challenge by Kepa, who wanted to get the ball ahead of El Yunusi. Was that his name? Uh, El Abdelawi. El Abdelawi, uh, the captain for Norway and uh, pulls him to the ground and then Josh King can step up and Norway gets a deserved equalizer. A very important one because I think a loss would have put Norway in real trouble because Sweden, not only Romania won, but also Sweden, had not much trouble with Malta. Um, you know, typically Swedish performance, get a 1-0 early in the first half. I think it was an international debut. Where do we have, where do we have the game here? That's the last one. Uh, on here, uh, Danielsen in the 11th opens the scoring. Then, you know, Sweden does, do, do, doesn't do much. They get a penalty. Larsen, Sebastian Larsen converts it. Uh, they get an own goal and then another penalty. So, in the 71st minute, between 58th and 71st, they score three goals. Done and dusted. Uh, not much excitement uh, there. Sweden gets the win. And now in the table, we have Spain. Uh, five points ahead of Sweden. If Spain would have won, they would have qualified, but that's not quite there yet. Romania, Norway. Romania is three points ahead of Norway. Now, the interesting part in this group is that uh, Sweden will host Spain um, on Tuesday and Romania will host Norway. And those are two big matchups because Spain can a secure qualification, but Sweden could really pull Spain back and Norway has basically a last chance against Romania. Should they win in Romania? And I think they threw away a win at home to uh, Romania. Should they win it? They're well back into the game there. And then let's go to Group J, the last one, which started with a bang. Um, Finland, who looks still very, looked very comfortable, completely uh, annihilated by Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, it took a little while, but once Pjanic made it, the, I think Pjanic opened the scoring. No, Hajrovic opened the scoring um, in the 29th. All hell broke loose. They get a kind of a weird penalty. Uh, you know, the ball hits here when I... 
Some people say it was a penalty. I probably, I probably would not have given it. I don't know what VAR would, would have done here if it was there, but it's 2 0 at halftime. Pjanic makes the penalty. Then in the 60th, and I um, also saw some of the game, I was more focused on Denmark, Switzerland. Um, but I saw, I saw, saw the chance where uh, Bosnia is peppering the Finnish goal and they cannot get the ball away. Finally, Pjanic puts it in, and then uh, Hodzic uh, later in a similar situation makes it 4 0. At that point, Finland uh, really looked bad, but they put one back um, in the 79th. Pojan Palo, Pojan Palo uh, makes it 4 1, and then in the last 10 minutes, actually, Finland wanted to get uh, the second goal. And the only thing, I don't have heavy dinner, but I think Finland won 2 0 against Bosnia at home, that they, they would have hold the head to head. That was important. Uh, but yeah, Bosnia, this is, was one of their last chance games, and they used that last chance. Um, and it doesn't look that bad for them in the group at the moment. Greece puts up a spirited fight. Italy, of course, playing in green. Um, has chances that they just gotta put on goal, uh, especially in the 60th minute. It should have been 1 0 for Greece, uh, bar none. Italy again, control possession, but not very convincing overall. Um, they get their breakthrough through a penalty, uh, stupid uh, defending, and he pulls the arm out, hits him here. Don't know what was the thinking behind that. Uh, and Jorginho in his hoppity hop uh, way converts. And then a little bit later, Bernadeschi um, takes a shot that was deflected into the net and it's 2-0. Uh, I think before Greece had this huge chance in the, in the 60th, Immobile had the first real chance for Italy from a header. Uh, Italy then almost could have made it 3, but I think it would have been too much. I think Greece did not really deserve to be beaten by a high scoreline. Yes, yeah, yes, I would even say... They put in a spirit enough uh, performance that a draw was well in the cards there. And then Armenia had the big chance to get themselves really into the running, get an early lead uh, in Liechtenstein through, let me pull it up, Berzagian, who actually had also another good chance to make it 2 0. However, Liechtenstein comes back, and Yannick Frick, the son. Of uh, I, of Frick the Liechtenstein legend, I don't know now the first name, um, scores equal in 72nd, and actually there could have been another goal uh, for Liechtenstein, and in stoppage time, a safe um, held the 1 1 for Liechtenstein. And so, if we look now in this group, Italy qualified, and then if Armenia would have won, they would have been level with Finland. However, uh, Finland still holds a two-point advantage, but Bosnia is now level with Armenia. So this is really, really tight between those two three now. Greece is unfortunately out, out of it, as is Liechtenstein. Uh, in the next round, uh, Finland hosts Armenia and Greece hosts Bosnia. I think those two games will, or will make a long way in deciding who goes uh, further. Finland, I think, has only one more home game, but doesn't have to play Italy. All the others have to play Italy one more time. So that, uh, no, Ar Ar Armenia does, doesn't have to play Italy either. Um, but, you know, Bosnia has to still play Italy. That might be um, the stepping stone uh, where they might not make it. Anyway, that was yesterday's games. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know anything more about uh, the games. If you saw more than I did, I would be happy to hear that. Drop a comment below, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.